Hello, welcome to another dev blog. Today we're going to be taking a look at a sneak peek of some Bridge OS 2.0 features. Let's dive in. All right, so Bridge OS 2.0. Uh, we talked a little bit in the last uh, dev blog episode that rather than simply making a few incremental changes, fixing a few bugs, um, and then releasing it as, as an iterative, um, you know, 1.3.2 or 1.4 or whatever, the number of changes that have been going on underneath the surface to the underlying code base have been pretty substantial, doing a lot of cleanup, a lot of refactoring. It's resulted in, you know, some really significant performance and size increases. So it's been a bit of a balancing act where we're looking at, you know, what new features can we add, um, you know, at launch for, for 2.0, but also making sure that we're not constantly feature creeping and, and adding, you know, more and more stuff. Um, so we don't want to delay it, uh, you know, and make it take any longer than it, it has already. A couple of weeks behind schedule of where I'd like to be, but things are going really well now. We have all core functionality for all um, of our bridge models uh, for the bridge Bridge 4 and Bridge 6 um, and the, you know, the different hardware variants. They're all implemented, all the core functionality seems to be working really well. Most of the new features that we wanted to put in are uh, in and, and working really nicely. Uh, there's one hold up at the moment, which is integrating editor support for the new Bridge OS. Uh, that's because we've made a number of changes to device API to streamline it, make it faster, which means your config upload and, and, and download speed is going to be much faster. We just need to tweak a few things and get it, you know, get it working just so because there has been a pretty substantial overhaul with that. It'll mean that if you want to get started with using device API for custom plugins or your own application, whatever it might be, that's going to be a lot easier and more performant. But our dev for that uh, has a couple of things going on. So it'd probably be another week or two until we can finalize the editor integration to that. But that is going to give us time to keep refining some of the onboard features. So let's take a look at a few of those. There's a couple I'm really excited to share with you. All right, so I've got a bridge four here. It's just a little smaller and easy to get close up on. You'll notice that the main UI has a couple of changes. So we've streamlined things a little bit. For now, these boxes here are going to remain the, the Flexiport mode indicators, depending on what you've got your Flexiport set to. But the goal is to open those up to be user assignable so you can have different information displayed. They're kind of like general purpose, um, configurable adaptive UI elements. So if you want to, uh, you know, show what's happening with your MIDI clock, you know, or a flexi port or whatever it may be, you can display those there. You've now got a bank index indicator over here on the left. I'm in the extended UI mode, not the simple UI mode, but the simple UI mode also features the bank index indicator. And banks are now indexed from one, which means instead of your bank numbering going from zero to 99, which can be a little confusing for some people. It now goes from one to 100. A couple of changes there. Now we also have a brand new mode called set list mode. So if you press on, on the bridge four, it's foot switch three, sorry, foot switch four and two, uh, the, you know, the two ones on the rightmost, we go into our set list editor. Hopefully it's not too hard to read on the camera there, but I've just pre-populated a couple of, you know, dummy banks um, in, in some sets to show you what's going on here. So set lists are a way for you to organize your banks, uh, you know, reorder them, organize them however you like, according to, uh, you know, your live performance, whatever it is that you might be doing. So we've got a collection of banks on board and you can see that by the bank numbers here, but they might be song titles, they might be parts in a song, whatever it is. And you can organize those in whatever order you like and add them into all of your different set lists. So on board, you can have, I believe it's eight different sets, each with 32 um, banks in each set list. So plenty of room to, uh, you know, to have ample live performance uh, space in there. So in the set list browser, which is this here, you can really easily see, so we're on set one, you can call that set whatever you like. Every set has its own name as well. Um, so you can really, you can go through the different sets that you might have available, set two. And the really cool thing about this, you see we jumped from set two to set four, is that it will only display sets that have active items in there. So you don't have to browse through your empty sets if you're looking to navigate quickly on the fly to somewhere. So we'll go to set seven and then back to set one. And this set has uh, quite a few things in it, so I can show you. So we can browse through, 
We can go down all the way to say, you know, something in 13. We can scroll through so you can use that um, hold um, acceleration to scroll quickly through your items. Then let's say you're on set one, you wanna jump quickly to, you know, item eight bit, you know, that might be a song name, whatever it is. We can press these two foot switches quickly here and now it'll take us to the set list view. Hopefully that's not too blown out on the camera there, but you have a couple uh, of little changes to the UI. You have your set name above the, the bank name there. And so when you bank up and down, instead of going linearly through the banks, it's going to go to the next bank that you have in your set. And I can see here I'm on bank 22, that's my index, and I'm on uh, item nine in the set list. So we go up to 10, uh, item 10 is bank 23, item 11 is bank 87, so on and so forth. Now I think this has 13 items in it. So when we bank up again, it's gonna uh, take us back to the first item in the set list. And you can jump back to your set list browser really quickly and easily by those two foot switches. Then we can, you know, we might wanna scroll through to, to a different set and you can browse through the sets really quickly there. Uh, you know, we'll jump to whatever item it is. Uh, and then you can exit this at any time by pressing on the two foot switches and it'll take you back to your main live view. You can also at any time press and hold these and it'll take you back to uh, wherever you were previously. So in this case, I'm in the, uh, the, the set list view. So really powerful features. The new UI should uh, give you a t an, an, you know that extra bit of freedom and flexibility with naming your banks because you don't have to have an, a number in there if you wanna keep track of the order. Got a couple of really nice new features in the global settings. So something you guys have been asking about a lot is the ability to really fine tune how the states of the switches are stored, you know, depending on the mode of the switch. So if you go into the interface menu here, you can see we've got a couple of new settings. One nice one is this invert bank option, which if we turn this on, we'll save it and exit out. You can see now you get the option to have your bank name highlighted like that. So it inverts the text. If you find that's easier to read based on the, the lighting conditions in your environment, you've got that option there as well. But going back to, uh, where are we? We'll turn that off for now. We'll go into, you can see there's a few new items here. We've got um, TOG, short for toggle states. We've got um, SCR states, scrolling states, and sequential states. And you can actually turn each one of these on or off depending on how you have it configured. So if you have switches in sequential mode and you have the sequential state set to on, it will remember which step those, uh, those sequential switches are up to. But if you have, let's say you have the scrolling state set to off, any switches in scrolling mode won't have the states remembered. So you might just want to have, um, you know, let's say you've got your, um, you, or you have your toggle states on, uh, then any switches in toggle mode will remember their toggle state for each bank, but switches in scrolling and sequential modes won't. So you have the option to, you know, to play around with that however you like. So some really nice tools there for uh, configuring, you know, uh, your different switch modes exactly how you'd like them. So connects it out. We've got a couple of new things under the hood that we're fine tuning, but there's some of the exciting new features coming with BridgeOS 2.0. Uh, there's a few more plenty, pl uh, plenty of uh, just general quality of life improvements, some overhauls of existing features, um, a, a bunch of bug, bug fixes. So really excited to get this out to you guys. Not too much else to talk about. I just wanted to showcase the set list browsing and a couple of the new features that I think are gonna be really, um, you know, been asked about a lot and are going to be really, really helpful for you. There's a very large list of uh, new improvements, new features that we would like to add in and we're going to be adding in over firmware updates. Like I said, it's just a matter of making sure that we don't try and do everything all at once. And then, you know, the, the timeline for delivery of the new firmware blows out by, you know, four months because we're putting all the, all the features and, and new improvements that everyone wants in. So we'll be rolling this out as soon as we can, getting feedback and then iteratively improving and releasing firmware really quickly. So that's all for today. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We'd love to hear from you guys. If you're not already, jump into our Facebook user group, a Pirate Media user group, and also our Discord server where you can hang out, discuss gear, and get the lay of the land if you're brand new to MIDI or if you're a seasoned veteran, you can dive in and get some great ideas and inspiration. See you guys.